naked speed. Organ use slavery, that's all chill. So I can start making babies as soon as the game starts. I have no money. They're already malnourished. Cat kingdom? I kill the squirrel. If you like Fallout 4 settlements, I think you'll enjoy the game I play in today's video. RimWorld. But, well, before I get into that, th there's so many things I want to say right now, but I think I'll just start by saying thank you. Thank you all so much for the love you've been showing me and the channel. The comments I've been getting have been so heartwarming and they give me the resolve to make even more videos. But, just as a heads up, I don't only play Fallout 4. Fallout 4 settlements made me want to play a game centered around that experience. And that's exactly what RimWorld is. It's a sci-fi settlement simulator sandbox storyteller. Unlike Fallout 4, I won't have the action-packed experience of shooting a hundred raiders' heads off, but, well, also unlike Fallout 4, each settler is a very unique character with a story to tell. Timestamps, music, and mods are in the description. Enjoy. Before I get started, I'll note that I own all the DLCs for this game. Uh, one of these DLCs adds genetically modified alien races, um, and another adds ideologies. Now, if I were to click new colony here, eventually I would get an option to create my own race and an option to create my own ideology. But I find it easier to create custom races and ideologies in these menus. It's just easier for me to maintain the plan I have for my colony when I do it that way. Otherwise, I'll just, I lose my train of thought when I go through the menus the way the new colony setup has it. So I'll get started by opening up the Xenotype Creator. I loaded up an old custom race I'd already made, which I dubbed Cat. The cat has a few features. Uh, naked speed, which lets them go faster while naked, but slower while clothed. They are super cold tolerant and super heat tolerant. They don't need to sleep as much. They have cat ears. Robust digestion, which lets them eat raw food uh, with relative ease. Dark vision, which lets them see in the dark. Fur skin, which makes them even more cold resistant. Smooth tail, which gives them 5% more manipulation. Awful melee, awful cooking, and awful artistic. These little pluses and minuses are metabolic efficiency. Worst traits generally will give metabolic efficiency, um, which makes it so you don't get hungry as fast. Good traits will give metabolic deficiency, which makes you get hungry quicker. So the normal hunger rate is 100%. The cat's rate is 225%. That's a little more than double the hunger. Now this is the race old me made. I thought, hey, I can make this better. Why would I take low sleep when I can take no sleep? So I got rid of the super tolerant traits and grabbed just normal tolerance. And then I got rid of low sleep and replaced it with never sleep, which uh, I thought would be good. Uh, I started a new, I saved it and started a new game. However, a thing I like to do is to get couples of colonists to get married and have kids. And that's cool. But uh, unfortunately, uh, if you don't sleep, they're never they're never in bed together, so they never do the, the the hanky panky. So that was a mistake. I had to restart. I wasted like 15 minutes doing that. Another thing I customized is my ideology. A thing I love about RimWorld that it feels pretty unique to a lot of colony sims. This is a randomly generated name for the ideology. My guys fall doctrine of animism. Basically, bro, we we're just like the best. We should all be like the best. And so that's what they do. They try to make other people cool and realize that everyone's cool and we should all be cool. And they're always telling people that they want to research real fast. Being promiscuous is not frowned upon. People can have unlimited spouses. Cannibalism, that's fine, bro. I mean, it's whatever. Clothing, no rules. Nudity is fine. Organ use, slavery, that's all chill. That's about all you need to know about this. Next, I'm going to hit new colony and I'll get to pick a starting scenario. Now, Scenarios dictate how many colonists I can start with and what they start with. Not just their clothes and weapons, but any materials or pre-built objects and machines. Uh, I choose a scenario I custom made for myself uh, that leaves me with six colonists that have nothing at all. Not even clothes. Next, I have a few difficulty options, and RimWorld has some unique choices. I can choose between three storytellers, which... Uh, Fundamentally speaking, are different algorithms for the rate of events. Events like enemy raids, spaceship chunks landing nearby, colonists catching illness, and honestly, really anything else. 
Cassandra Classic will give a pretty consistent rate of scary events, then take a break, and then that just loops. Uh, Phoebe Chillax will give you long breaks in between a maelstrom of horrendous events. And Randy Random is ramming. Ran and Randy Random is random. I went with Randy. Um, it just feels more natural that things happen randomly than on a schedule. Uh, again, these storytellers merely determine the rate of events, not ho how hard those events will be. That's where the difficulty setting comes in. There are several difficulties to choose from, including custom making my own. A lot of options here for that. Um, but I just go for community builder. In this difficulty, there's generally a lot of relaxing downtime, but there is no question that my colonists can die if I'm not careful or lucky enough. This difficulty wouldn't be too hard if I were super min-maxing or try-harding, but I'd rather just relax a little bit. Next, I get to somewhat customize the world I'm gonna land on, but for this playthrough, I didn't touch these settings at all. Now I get to choose where on the rim world I want to land. Uh, for this playthrough, I believe I landed right around here. It's a temperate forest. You know, there's a lot of different biomes I could have landed on. Um, and some of these are really hard to live in. But right here in the mountains on a river, we'll have some water. The water doesn't really do anything, honestly, but I can use it for hydroelectricity. Being somewhat in the mountains here, that's what this little stuff here is, means I can also build bases somewhat into the side of rocks and mountains and hills. Next, I pick my colonists. Now, picking colonists in RimWorld isn't as simple as character creation. No, if you want character creation, you're gonna need mods. Instead, I have to hit the randomize button over and over again until I get what I want. Luckily, there is one variable that I can lock in and that's the race of the colonists. So, I of course set all mine to cats, then I hit the random button a few times on each of them. I'm looking to have three men and three women under 30 with no health concerns or bad personality traits. This means their skills won't be as good, but that's okay. I get pretty lucky hitting that random button. I get two married couples amongst my colonists, so I can start making babies as soon as the game starts, meaning I won't have to spend as much time getting colonists to hook up. Finally, I load into the actual game world. The first thing I do is open the work tab and assign my colonists to different tasks. The columns you see are the job types and the rows are the colonists. When I first start, I like to put all my colonists on harvesting, planting, mining, and constructing because I really need to get things up and running and I can't worry if the worker is super efficient at the particular task when we're trying not to starve. The first thing my colonists get to do is chop down a bunch of trees for a building I want to make. They have to have a place to sleep and a place to put all the stuff they gather. Here's me designing the building. It's just a 9x9 nine nine wooden square with a door and then I put a stockpile zone down in the middle of all of it. As I watched them build it, I realized I forgot to put some sleeping spots down, so I put down a few of those. Then I make sure to assign couples sleeping spots correctly so that married couples are sleeping together and not with a stranger. Then I zoom out, double click on a berry bush which selects all berry bushes that my camera can see and just select harvest. They put a roof on the building. They chop down trees and collect berries throughout the day and then meet back up for a little nap ski. I wait for them to sleep. Once they're awake, I design a little garden to be attached to the building. They start building it and planting rice there as I command. These guys won't be able to live off the naturally growing berries for forever, so it's good to start growing crops ASAP. I put down a dumping zone for all the nearby boulders. Throughout the day, they gather even more berries. I expand the garden two times. Some spacecraft chunks have landed nearby and I ordered them harvested. A couple of travelers come by, I try trading with them, but then I remember I have no money. The travelers are very nice and gift me a slave collar. All right then. I add a couple more sections to the garden and the pawns build it. I build each of the colonists a bedroom. I build another room over here. I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for yet, but it's nice to have extra rooms. At this point, I've exhausted all the berry bushes on the map, and I'm still waiting for the rice to grow. So, I have the idle settlers chop down trees and make bows, but they're already malnourished by the time the first bow is made. I'm not sure I'll be able to avoid someone starving, 
But I get lucky. Some cargo pods drop that have more than 200 units of rice. That should be enough to feed them until the harvest. A few days have passed, so I get this pop-up to name my faction in the place I'm staying at. I name my faction Cat Kingdom, and the location I'm staying at, Cat's Hope. A crazy raccoon shows up that tries to kill us, but we kill it. I have everyone cut down trees the rest of the day, then they go to sleep. The next morning, I have them expand the storage area. I decide to put a research table in the empty room. I find a vein of compact steel and have my settlers mine it. I create four more rooms for researching and pick stone cutting as the first thing to research. Some of the rice is fully grown and they harvest it. We get a couple more spacecraft chunks. Some of my colonists are on the verge of a mental break, so I decide to put down a stone toss hoop so they can have a little fun. Spend an entire day harvesting rice. Some royalty shows up being chased by a crazed squirrel. I kill the squirrel. The royalty leaves in his uber, which awards us eight honor with their faction. Okay. The settlers have basically finished mining that first vein of steel, so I get another one queued up. So you can get two colonists to romance each other, uh, and then they'll sleep with each other, and I can have them make a baby. Um, but there's only a, a certain percent chance that it'll work. But if I save before I make them do it, I can just keep reloading until it actually works. So I do that here to get these two colonists together. We finished researching stone cutting, so I queued up beer brewing next. I don't really intend to do anything with beer brewing, I just... I'm just researching the lowest tech stuff. Next I build a stone cutter's bench and just queue up to make any stone blocks for forever, so I will always have some supply of stone blocks. I create a wood-fueled stove so I can make what's essentially beef jerky. Uh, it lasts a lot longer than raw food, so... I basically just sit here and farm rice for a bit and then I feel I have a pretty good stockpile of rice and decide to grow potatoes which take longer to grow but have a better time per nutrition output. I also start hunting a bunch of animals so I can use their skins to make sleeping bags so my colonists can sleep in that instead of just on the floor. I also put a bunch of tables and chairs in the storage area so my colonists have somewhere to eat. Uh, they actually get upset if they don't eat at tables, so it's good to have them. And then we kill the man-killing tortoise. Beer brewing finishes, and I start working on complex furniture so I can make beds and shelves, which I like. Everything goes pretty smoothly for a few days. Everyone just does their job, nothing too crazy. Oh, I also forgot to mention, at some point, all three of the women got pregnant uh, from their from their lovers. Um, so that that's a thing. A guy being chased by two man-killing rats joins the colony. Uh, we kill the rats. It was pretty easy. Finish researching complex furniture and move on to Devil Strand, which is a fancy fibrous mushroom. I queue up a bunch of shelves in the storage area, and I add a little bit of an expansion so our new colonist can get a bedroom. Also, the new colonist isn't like a cat person, he's just a normal guy, so I have to put torches around a bunch of the base so he can see where he's going. We carry on for a little bit. Devil Strand is done, we move on to research smithing. The base is getting a little cramped and it's gonna be hard to expand if I don't do something drastic, so I add this big courtyard area um, that I can build things off of. We carry on for a bit, nothing too crazy happens, we kill a crazy hare, um, I add a second stove so I can cook more, and I add a bunch of new shelves. Smithing finishes, we research Great Bow. Carry on for a little bit, the only major thing that happens is, well, you remember that couple I kept save scumming to make sure they got together? Well, uh, the guy proposes to the girl, and the girl says no, and they break up while she's pregnant with his child. So that's kind of wild. So good thing I made that addition because I got to add another bedroom because uh, those two aren't sleeping together anymore. Fast forward a bit. Hey, someone just gave birth. I start working on a master bedroom for the baby's family. Fast forward, great bows done onto complex clothing. I realize I'm out of food, so I harvest the potatoes early, and I name the baby Gunno. Fast forward. Because one of the other mothers is about to give birth, I create a second master bedroom ahead of time. I realize that my new colonist doesn't have a weapon, 
and I just researched great bow, so I decide to make like seven of those for all my colonists. Another lady gives birth and we give the baby the name Hawk. I do that thing again where I keep reloading saves to make two people fall in love. This time it's the new colonist and the lady who broke up with her boyfriend. Once they get together, I try to put them in the same bed so they'll sleep together and make a kid. But whatever ideology he follows does not permit him to have sex before marriage. So then I get thinking, okay, I need to figure out how to get this guy to know the truth. I immediately start working on changing part of the courtyard into a temple so we can have a place to convert this man to the right way of thinking. Right here is when I noticed uh, there's some stranger outside of our place bleeding out. Uh, when I inspect his health, it looks like he has a bunch of damage from uh, like having a, a brawl with another person. So I assume he came here with a group of travelers. He got into a fight with one of them, got the crap beaten out of him, and just lost his ability to walk after that. All right, I'm not going to sugarcoat it, guys. Something awful, but also boring happened. Uh, four of my colonists caught the plague. I did all I could, but uh, only one of them recovered. Uh, Baby Hawk died of the plague. Baby Hawk's mom died of the plague. And Gunno's dad died of the plague. So that was kind of fucked up. So I decided to bury them and give them funerals. And then in the middle of the funerals, fucking we get raided by some fucking guy with a knife. I mean, he didn't stand a chance against a bunch of guys with bows, but I mean, the audacity, the disrespect, bro. So I finished burying everyone. And then you remember that new couple I again save scummed to get together? Well, the guy proposed and was rejected. They didn't break up, but he was rejected. And, you know, I'm starting to get the feeling that maybe save scumming to get people to get into a relationship probably means those people aren't gonna be a great couple I'm just start i'm starting to get that idea i could be wrong i don't know anyways that's, that's pretty much it for this video fucking man it was chill for a while but damn three people dying of the plague that's awful